Hey YouTubers, what's up? I'm talking today about what I think is the best portrait lens most photographers should actually buy. Forget about the other ones. Let's get right to the video. All right, we're back. Please, before we get started, like, subscribe, comment, do all those things. I'd love to get a ton of views on these videos and help as many photographers as I can. Only way I can do that is if you actually watch the videos. So what I want to get into very quickly is what I think is the best portrait lens you should buy. Let's take one step back. What is a portrait lens? A portrait lens for the most part is usually about an 85 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. And the reason for that is almost all lenses create a distortion. And then if you're taking pictures of a person's face, creating distortions are generally not a good thing. So with an 85 millimeter, you have no distortion. You're getting a very accurate representation of a person's face. And with a portrait, people notice more than anything else weirdness that would come up. So if you used a wide angle lens, like a 24 to 70, yes, you can take portraits with it. But what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna like fatten out the face a little bit and make it look a little weird. Same thing with taking portraits with like a 35 millimeter prime lens or even a 50 starts still creating a little distortion. Same thing then, if you go into like a 70 to 200 and longer than that, you're gonna get weird kind of things happening where it's gonna actually be compressing the face too much. You're also gonna get weird effects there. Of course, if you're a master, you know the right lens and you want some weird effect, go for it, have fun. But 85 millimeter, there's a reason it's nicknamed a portrait lens. It's really the go-to. Then you're gonna Google, you're gonna go try to buy a portrait lens and realize there are a ton of options and the prices are all over the place. The portrait lens I would always recommend getting, and this is gonna be for Nikon because obviously it's a better camera, um, is gonna be the 85 1.8. And immediately you're gonna be like, that's a 400 to $500 lens, you're gonna buy it used, it's only gonna be like 300 or 350, so it's a great deal. Why would I not be buying the Nikon 1.4? or the Sigma 1.4 or the Tamron 1.4. And the reason for that is you're looking at two to three times the price of on the lens. Um, the Nikon is, I believe, was like 1400 bucks and the Sigma is right around a thousand and I'm gonna guess the Tamron is right around the same price too. And yes, you are getting an optically better lens. It's sharper and with that aperture, it's now opening up to 1.4 but you need to realize what you're using it for. A portrait lens you're gonna be using generally for lit headshots, at least in my experience. I'm not doing a lot of ambient, ambient light headshots. Because of that, with a lit headshot, your settings are fairly locked off and you're doing most of your work with the lighting and changing those settings. So my aperture when I'm taking headshots is gonna be anywhere between 5.6 and f8. It is never going to be at 1.8 and it's never going to need to be at 1.4. So paying over a thousand dollars more for a lens that I actually can't use what I'm really paying for there is pointless. Uh, I'm sure there's a comparison video online that's much better than this that's going to go over taking shots with a Nikon 1.8 and a 1.4 and show you some very, very minor optical differences, maybe with the sharpness, maybe with the vignetting at the edges. But those to me are just pixel peeper facts and those are not real differences. They're definitely not differences you're going to see in day to day in a working environment. So with that said, the 1.8, 1.4, it doesn't matter because you're going to be working in that 5.6 to F8 range. Let me circle back then and talk also about ambient light portraits and why you might be using this. Again, you do not want to use a 1.4 lens to take a portrait of a person's face. Reason being that you can use the depth of field calculator, which I'll link right here. At 1.4 with an 85, depending on your distance to the subject, if you focus on the eyeball, the nose might be out of focus. The ear might be out of focus. And if you're taking a portrait of a person, unless it's unbelievably stylized and artsy, you want the actual face to be in focus. Sure, we can have hair fall off, we can have shoulders fall off, but the whole face really does need to be in focus. The difference between shooting at 1.4 and 1.8 might mean that many elements of the face itself are actually out of focus 
and that's going to actually lead to crappy pictures, not better bokeh. Um, again, you could be using a lens that's almost $1,000 cheaper and get an identical, if not better, result using that. Um, and then just in my own uh, anecdotal experience, the 1.8 focuses faster than the 1.4. I have no idea why, but it does. Um, yeah, so buy a 1.8 lens. Don't get bought into the hype that it says 1.4 and you have to buy it. Uh, and take a whole bunch of headshots with it and a whole bunch of portraits. Tell me what you think. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. Team Nikon, 85 1.8. Do it.